Today marks the 35th anniversary of a John Fuang's passing. So it's good to think about the people who've passed on the Dharma to us, the lessons they taught. Because when we read the, the suttas, we have to realize the Buddha never meant for the suttas to be read on their own. They were meant to be read in a social context, memorized actually, and then discussed with people who had already been practicing the Dharma. So you've got to understand things that were mentioned only briefly, or not quite so clearly, how people have found a practical way of applying them, and what lessons they learned. When I first went to stay with the John Fu, I began to notice he had certain powers that I had never encountered in anyone before. He seemed to be able to read people's minds and know what was going to happen. I guess he noticed I was too much interested in that kind of stuff, because one evening he said, you know, the whole purpose of this practice is to purify the heart. Everything else is just games. So that's the message that he wanted to pass on. And that's the message we should take to heart as well, because everything else we do in the practice is aimed right here. Our hearts have their defilements, greed, aversion, and delusion. And when we recognize them, we realize that something has to be done about them, that's when we begin to get on the path. All too many people say they're suffering because of things outside. They're constantly complaining about things outside. But the real problem is inside. What is your mind doing to take the things coming from outside and stab itself with them? It's out of greed or aversion or delusion. If you could cleanse the mind of those things, then the mind wouldn't have to suffer. So we cleanse our minds with virtue, we cleanse them with concentration, and then we cleanse them with discernment. The Buddha talks of the, the path as being a, a washing of the mind. So wash your mind every day, every day. And that's when you know that you're practicing the Dharma in the right way. If you see that your behavior is being influenced by any of the reasons that would make you go off course, either desire or aversion or delusion or fear, you have to stop and realize, okay, you've gone away from the purpose of the teaching. So do what you can to cleanse the mind of those things. When the Buddha talked about the beginning ways of cleansing, when he talked about meditation, the meditation would usually begin with goodwill. Goodwill for yourself, goodwill for everyone around you. And notice where your goodwill is turning into something else, turning into its opposite. That's a sign that there's a problem. So look for the problems inside. Clean the mind inside. And that way you're passing on a good tradition. Because people, there have been people outside of the religion too who can read minds and can tell the future. But having that kind of power can also be very intoxicating. And it can be abused. Whereas the pure mind cannot be abused. The pure heart cannot be abused. So when you make that your purpose, that's when you know you're safe. Just make sure that you don't go wandering away from that purpose. Because that's when you get into dangerous territory. The pure mind is right here. If there are defilements right here, okay, get rid of them right here. And John Lee's analogy is of salt water. There is pure water in the salt water, but you're not going to get it out. You're not going to get the salt out just by looking at it or setting it aside, making it still. You have to distill it. That requires effort. So aim all your efforts at purity. That's when you get the fresh water that you want.